Hi, Office of Work champions. Welcome to the Office of Work Insider. This is a monthly series where we cover the ins and outs of Office of Work in the Microsoft 365 ecosystem. My name is Chris, and I take care of the marketing team here at Office of Work. So let's get started with our CEO, Martin. What have you got in store for our Office of Work champions today? Yes, I picked out a few topics that uh, we shipped just lately. The first feature I want to show you is the user photo feature, a photo like here. How do you do that? Uh, I've got a sample template here, which is very simple. My goal now here is to insert a user photo picture in front of the name. So the only thing I need to do is go here on the placeholders, choose from Azure AD the field user photo, and that will bring me the profile picture of the user stored in Microsoft 365. I'll quickly adjust the dimensions. And while I'm done, I've got this uh, user image now as part of my signature. And where does it take the user photo from? This is stored in Microsoft 365. Obviously, customers have to then uh, think about storing a good looking, consistent, nice photo for all their employees. But if they go to the trouble of doing that, they will have the benefit of having their photo automatically pop up in the email signature. So it's part of the Microsoft 365 data structure uh, and is assigned to a user uh, by default. The next thing I'd like to show you, and that's coming out of a demand where uh, in this example, you can see we, we, we opt for the, the user to define uh, some days or the days that he's working in the office, uh, as this is kind of like a common thing, home office, not home office, part-time work, and so on. And this is something which may not be stored in a system where a user has to type it, themse type it in themselves. That's why we have introduced this new uh, text field element where you can extend a signature with a text field. And uh, this is the experience the user will be shown in the mail ID in Outlook. And when he types in that he, for instance, is only available from Monday to Friday, he will just type this in here. And then that data will be rendered into the signature wherever appropriate. If it's not there, then you'll see that this whole line will disappear. Also, let me show you quickly how that is done. So I'm going back to my example here at the bottom. Um, uh, this is where I want this information to be. You can see I type here, that's, that's where it will come. And the first thing I need to do, I need to extend this form for this new input field. And to do that, uh, I will just go and say add element, uh, text field, and I'll say this is called work days, work days. I'll give it a label like work days. I think that's already enough. Uh, by having this, people can type something into the field. So I'm just going to do that. I'm also going to write Monday to Thursday. But now it's not being used in the template yet, so I need to put in a placeholder for that. So I go on the placeholders, and you see this placeholder menu got extended by any uh, input field that you define here or form field. If I click here, then you'll see that this information is represented here. So you're completely free in how many fields and, and uh, you want to use and how you want to order them and so on. As a little outlook, what's going to happen uh, in the near future? Maybe you've seen here that we've also got an organization picker where you can pick a organization unit, uh, and that will then also have an influence on your signature. This is something that's coming very soon. It's a preview feature, but soon you'll see here uh, also an option to uh, add a SharePoint input feed. So along with the mail signature, we also introduced a new feature for the wizard. This is Word. This is our standard wizard. Uh, users that are using this will recognize this. Uh, whenever you create a new document, the wizard by default will set all your data as you wish. But let's say if you have a role where you're writing documents for someone else, for instance, your boss, and you don't want to go through here and say contact person is my boss and signature person one is my boss and I'm going to co-sign it with him and so on. You'd like to make those settings or, 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 or store those settings in a, in a profile kind of way and just apply them. That's exactly what we did. So if you look at this document here, the contact person is me, the signature one is me, and there's no signature two. Now, just by going onto my account icon here, I can choose uh, a second or I can choose a different profile. I've got my profile here, which has a star, which means that's going to be applied every time I create a new document by itself. But if I, for this document, want to change it, I just click on that one. And now that profile gets applied. And I've got now my boss's name as a contact person. He's going to be the signee number one, and I'm offering your signee number two. And the way I did this is I can go and edit these profiles. I just click on Add to create a new one. If I want to look at an existing one, I click here, 
And then you'll see that in this profile, I have defined the contact person to be my boss and uh, him to be signature person one and I'm signature person two. So that's all it takes to create a profile and to then apply it as you saw before. And is that specific per document? So you can redefine these profiles, how it starts up as a memo, as a letter, and they will always save per document in that sense? Actually, they are because this is more a role-based feature where uh, you, you, you write different kinds of documents for your boss. It is it's a, it's a global profile which you define for yourself. So the profile is scoped to yourself. Your boss or your your coworkers may have different profiles. They have created some other ones, but you will have this across many documents. So if I have a report, I can write it in the name of my boss. If I have a letter, I can write it in the name of my boss. If I have a memo, I can write it in the name of my boss or prepare it for him. So uh, this is a feature which is scoped to you across all templates. Okay, that makes it easy then. So one profile or one profile fits all. And if you have several different hats on in many different departments, let's say in a small company, then you only have to create three or four profiles and it covers you for all the documents in that sense. Absolutely. I mean, it's a it's a very common request in in like uh, service centers where um, a lot of people write for write documents or create documents for other people, uh, which then just go and sign it. So maybe so maybe a management level and assistance. This would be a very typical scenario. So there's uh, there's one more thing on my list I'd like to show you, Chris. Um, it's something in PowerPoint which uh, is really cool. Customers have been waiting quite a long time on this here. And let me just quickly show you what's in here. So it's a really small one, uh, that slide, team slide, market numbers, and so on. But I realized, Chris, these are market numbers of 2023. So somebody did not update those marketing numbers. And that was my bad, in, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> so in, 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 a, in a proper organization, this might be marketing and they should have updated that. So let's go there. Uh, let's have a look where those where that content lives. So this is, again, uh, the SharePoint document library where those slides are stored. And here we have the marketing uh, share slide. I'll just go and open up that one and make the changes. So let's just assume we... Uh, increased our share in the US and because it's now above, I don't know, 50%, I'm going to make this nice and green. That will be it, I guess. Yes, yeah, so are we staying in 2023 or are we back to 2024? Did I not update that? Uh, oh, yes, I did. Oh, sorry, that. So that means uh, we can share the blame now. I also own the updated exactly. half of it. <laughs> so let's close that. Um, so that was it. Chris did his job. And as a user, I would now uh, just open my presentation again. And you'll see that next to having the wizard and the slide chooser open, all by itself, the verifier pops up. And it says, tells me the market share slide is out of date. So it's actually this one, and I can just go and say, yeah, okay, uh, that's none of my business. Someone else did that, so I can just go and say update and watch how my market share slide got updated. Really cool. Damn. Okay. So it doesn't matter what existing presentation we have. If there's a slide that was changed, regardless of the presentation, it will always update it with the verifier by just popping up and telling you this and this is out of date. Yeah, and I can give you a little peek into the future. We are, we're going to extend this capability. Uh, uh, let me get the data back here. So we're going to add some metadata that you can add, um, add to your content. And one of these metadata types will be uh, the update, um, which I say, the update method or the update type. And you can choose to have it updated automatically. If you choose for automatic, that would mean that the verifier would do this update in the background. Okay, there's a certain there's a certain danger to this that people open up files and suddenly stuff changes. But it's really up to the content creator to decide which slides you want to prompt the user and which slides you you, you just say you know whatever the user did on that slide that's a no go. It is a marketing slide which has to be the same every time anyone opens an existing presentation and it should update to the current numbers. So we're going to give a more granular um, uh, tuning options for you to decide how this updating should work in PowerPoint.
Awesome. So that was like the entirety of the you know, all new features that we have, or we've ha- we've brought out in the last what month or so. Well, I would I would say the highlights. You know, we have a deployment cadence of let's say weekly or or, or even a few times per week. Sometimes there's minor updates. Sometimes there are bigger updates that you'll see, um, and that's the whole point of this show here that we can, can kind of. Uh, show p- bigger pieces which have been done maybe also hint in what's coming uh just repair our customers or our office work uh champions in a way that they can best use all of our products awesome well you already hinted at it but you said of what's coming so is there anything that we have on the horizon yeah uh we, we have set a few goals for 2024 um one of them, we actually we should be bringing out a new add-in fairly soon. Uh, it's called Formatter. Uh, it's all about um, being able to have a central style sheet that can be applied onto a document. Uh, we have a lot of plans for that. It will be very, very simple when it comes out. In, at, at, at first, it will be for Word only. But it's like starting this new adventure of of managing styling and offering users a easy and, and consistent way of styling uh, documents. Of course, this is built on top of that styling is really part of every single Office document. Office documents have colors and fonts and stuff defined, but it's more that some companies have like two, two communication scenarios like internal or external or, or correspondence and reporting, and that will make it easy to switch the styling on an existing document between two different things, and uh, yeah, I'm very, I'm very uh, eager to see that uh, hit the marketplace. I, I'm predicting a slower start because the feature richness isn't isn't that great, but over time, I'm I'm pretty sure this will be something uh, a lot of users will love because it makes formatting so easy. Yeah, because eventually, I think it will also. I guess integrate with other Office of Work apps. Let's say I don't know the yeah. verifier or something where they can verify if the call it the styling is up to date for especially for brand management. From my perspective, it would be really interesting just to see that uh, come to life. Yeah, absolutely. So we're we are I mean we are gonna bring this formatting idea into many of the add-ins. Uh, we will start with, it, with with its own add-in where you can actually select the style sheet. But of course, we will connect it to the wizard where when you choose a specific brand or a specific location, that that can come along with a, with a different style sheet. And that if a style sheet gets updated, that the verifier picks up on the change and will alert the user that, hey, there's a new style sheet and uh, apply it. And then suddenly, for instance, if you change the color from blue to red, then suddenly your headings will all be red without the user having to know what exactly has changed. He will just be able to uh, get the new style sheet. So I think there's a... There's a lot to be gained in, in especially when when formatting changes, uh, for that change to be a bit less painful, especially for the users. Awesome. Um, is there anything else that we got? Yeah, yeah I've, I've, I have. You may have seen me. I look down. I'm I'm looking at my notes <laughs> here. I've got two more, two more things. Uh, the obvious thing, which everybody's talking about, is AI. Um, mm. I can't I can't really talk much about that. Um, just. Uh, for our champions to be aware, we are thinking about that. We are looking into this. We work with Microsoft on this. And I think like many, we are trying to figure out what the best use case is. And so this is something I would say, which is just background work in, in this for this year. I'm not sure if anything will surface this year, uh, but we are certainly on, on, the, on this topic and trying to figure out what the best way would be to support our users with AI in our scenario. I've seen a reference customer story with some cool pictures. Maybe you can pull it up. I think that's quite uh, impressive. So yeah, here we have it. Um, one of our clients, Pilatus, who's an aircraft manufacturer right from Switzerland, uh, we've been helping them with strengthening their brand identity. And we've done so that they do in every document and every presentation they have. So we create a short story about it, why they actually came to us, what are the products that we provided to them. So for them, the perfect solution was the template chooser, wizard, con chooser, designer, and of course the mail signature. And for them, it's just really easy. They can just you know select any of the slides. They're all branded uh, also with the wizard. They can always have the right format in every presentation. Mail signature always keeps them 
right on brand and yeah, it just gives them a very good overall format that they can use uh, to always match their brand identity at the end of the day. Okay, uh, I'll leave it up to you to wrap it up if you have any last comments. So yeah, that's it for today. Thank you so much for everyone for watching. We will try and keep this as a monthly update. Please let us know if there's any features or anything you would like to see in the coming episodes or any features that you would like us to implement. And yeah, we'll see you in a month.